خب شش و پنج دقیقه هستش اگر دوستان اجازه بدن من مجدد سلام بگم به دوستانی که تا الان به جلسه ملحق شدن سایر دوستان هم به مرور ملحق خواهند شد من دسترسی میدم که وارد بشن این سومین برنامه مشترک هستش که ما داریم با بخش راجرز سایبر سیکیور کاتالیست برگزار میکنیم دو تا برنامه قبلی این فوسشن هایی که بود بسیار مفید بود تعدادی از دوستانی که شرکت کرده بودن موفق شدن که پذیرش این برنامه رو بگیرن تحصیلاتشون رو به زودی شروع خواهند کرد برای ماه اکتبر این تیک دیگه ای هست پذیرش دیگه ای هستش که انجام خواهد شد امروز میخوایم ببینیم که شرایط این رشته چیه با این پروگرام با این برنامه آشنا بشیم و اینکه به چه شکل دوستان میتونن واجد شرایط بشن و اقدام کنن و بعد مراحل بعدی به چه صورت خواهد بود برنامه تا ساعت هشت هست اگر دوستان سوالی دارن در طول برنامه میتونن تو قسمت چت بنویسن یا اینکه دست بلند کنن میکروفون ها رو روشن کنن سوالات رو بپرسن و برگزار کننده برنامه فارسی که صحبت نمی کنن انگلیسی صحبت می کنن و ممنون میشم اگر سوالاتتون رو انگلیسی بپرسین چون ممکنه من هر لحظه پشت سیستم نباشم که بخوام براشون ترجمه کنم اوکی سو آتونولا Uh, I can pass it on to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That yeah, was the introduction so in Farsi. So fluency. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I don't even understand. <laughs> 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 But it was so smooth. Anyway, so um, good evening, everyone. My name is Odunola Bola Deshope, and I will be uh, talking to us about the accelerated cybersecurity training program. I'm sharing my screen now. Please let me know if you can see. Please. Yep, um, we can see that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Kavi. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the great uh, partnership that we've had with uh, PAND Settlement. Uh, we value the relationship and we hope to continue to serve um, your client as much as we can. So welcome again, everybody. And... Um, um, We'll be focusing on, of course, talking about the Accelerated Cybersecurity Training Program. Very quickly, I'm going to talk about who we are, and then we move on to the session. So we are the Roger Cybersecure Catalyst, and we are the Toronto Metropolitan University's National Center for Innovation and Collaboration. I know that sounds like a lot, but really what we are in a nutshell is we're a not-for-profit, and we're owned by the Toronto Metropolitan University which was formerly known as Ryerson University. So we recently uh, were still undergoing a name change. So please bear with me if you hear me mention Ryerson at any point. So the goal of our organization is, um, is to collaborate with uh, industry leaders, with the government and with, with academia to be able to educate Canadians on how to tackle the challenges of cybersecurity. And you may then wonder what, what are the kind of challenges we're talking about? Um, cybersecurity um, is very important. In the last two years specifically, since COVID started, there have been over 300, actually 300% increase in cyber attacks since, um, since the start of COVID. And that obviously um, has made us more vulnerable. Uh, every 39 seconds, somebody gets hacked. So there are several, several, uh, I could go on and on telling you about the several reasons why cybersecurity is important, why you should not take it lightly, why you should pay attention. But more importantly is how cybersecurity would actually be a great career for you. That is why we're here today. That is why our program Uh, exists to be able to help you develop that skill and build a career in cybersecurity for you to launch a career in cybersecurity. So I'd just like us to uh, take part in a very short trivia, which I think uh, you would find very interesting when you see some information. So if you have your mobile phone with you, I'm going to ask that you please click on Kahoot, go to kahoot.it. If you have your mobile phone, I'd like some of us to participate. As many of you as can, that would be great. But if you go to www.kahoot.it, um, you will you will need to enter this code. I don't know if you see the code. Do you see it?
No, we don't. Okay. Um, hold on. Well, can you hear the sound? Yeah. Okay, great. Now, can you see it? Yes, we can see. Excellent. So, please just enter this code into your phone. And now I believe that players will start to log in in one second. Okay, great. Now I see three players. Four. I'm just going to give it 30 more seconds and then we we'll continue. Because I know that it's been a long day for some of us and we just want to go rest. Okay. What do you think? I'm sure we've talked about this already. <laughs> you just punch the answer on your mobile phone. I see only three answers, four answers. We have seven people. So we're waiting on three, five answers, two more persons, one more person. Let us see. Every 39 seconds, I remember that this was up on the screen. So we see those that paid attention. Let us move on to the next question. Whoa, Reza is on the, is the highest score for now. Let's see. Take a wild guess. Just take a wild guess. What do you think? Okay, three answers. Four answers. We five, six, great. One more person. There are 4.6 billion active internet users. So know this today. <laughs> These are interesting statistics that you should just know for, maybe for the sake of knowing, but just know it. <laughs> right. Okay. Let us see. Whoa. Someone is leading. Let's see. I know I mentioned this. I remember that I mentioned this. So let's see those that paid attention. Three hundred percent. Do you mean only two people heard me? Oh my god! <laughs> this is interesting. So let's see. Whoa! Look at that. Okay, we're halfway done. Just take a wild guess. What do you think? Obviously, you know that unwanted emails are spam, junk, all of those emails. So I've given you the answer already. Now it's the fastest finger. Excellent. Thank you very much for not letting me down. <laughs> Whoa, someone is sitting pretty on the leaderboard. Let's see. Just take a wild guess. What do you think fishing is? Excellent. Thank you very much. So we are aware of, yeah, excellent. Thank you. Okay, we're almost there. Take a wild guess, like what, how much do you possibly think? How 
How much do you think we're losing to cyber attacks? There you go. Whoa, nobody. Excellent. Let's go. Yeah, only 10% of cybersecurity professionals in Canada are women. These are just interesting information for you to know. Yeah, we already know who won. What? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anyway, so I will just continue to share my screen and we move on to the rest of the presentation. I hope that got a bit of us, um, you know, excited about um, a career in cyber and what to expect from being a cybersecurity professional, how much has been lost to cyber attacks and all of that. So um, like I said earlier, our goal as an organization is to educate Canadians and businesses on how to tackle the challenges of cybersecurity. We have identified that there is a major gap in the cybersecurity field, and we want to be able to help fill that gap. But the only way, one of the ways to fill that gap is to have highly qualified professionals uh, trained and ready to actually help tackle cybersecurity challenges. And so by doing this, we've, we've um, partnered with RBC, we partnered with the government of Canada, with Rogers Communication, and the goal of this partnership, like I said, is to train people, train businesses on how to tackle the challenges of cybersecurity. We're bringing in women in cyber. We want more women to come into cybersecurity. We want people who have a diverse background to also come into cybersecurity. We want people who have um, interesting personalities. We just want different people from different parts of uh Canada to build a career in cybersecurity. So regardless of your technical background, we want you to know that you can build a career in cybersecurity. And so moving on to the core of our program, our program, like I said, we are owned by the Toronto Metropolitan University. But in order to be able to deliver you this cybersecurity training, we have partnered with SANS and GIEC. If you know anything about cybersecurity, you will know that SANS is the world's leading cybersecurity training provider. So we partnered with the best of the best to be able to help deliver this cybersecurity training. And the goal of this partnership is to actually train you with, um, equip you with the right training that is required and the certifications that you need to be able to launch a career in cyber. We all know for a fact that we're in a certification driven world, right? For you to really uh, build a good career in tech these days, you need certifications. These certifications will validate your knowledge, will help organizations, will help recruiters know that you actually know what you are doing. So if you're part of this program, at the end, you'll be getting three certifications that will help you launch your career in cybersecurity. Um, I'm going to move on very quickly to what the program is about. So details of the program, really, it's a seven month program. It is very intensive, it's accelerated. And at the end of the seven months, you'll be having three certifications, three cybersecurity certifications that would help you start your career. 
In terms of the cost, um, obviously you'll be doing courses that will prepare you for the certification. So three cents courses, three certifications, and then you would also uh, be getting hands-on uh, ex uh, hands assistance with your job search, right? But all of this is valued at over $30,000. However, because of the partnership that we have with the government, RBC, Rogers, and the city of Brampton, it has become a tuition-free program. So that cost of over $30,000 is borne by all of these our partners. And the only figure that you have to pay is $500. Honestly, I call this a once in a lifetime opportunity. So if you truly think that cyber is for you, this is a program that you should take advantage of as quickly as you can. Right now, um, we have partnered with Parent Settlements over the last couple of months, and we've had really great turnout. Some of uh, some clients from Parent Settlements have uh, applied to this program. Some of them are currently in the program. And it's just really, it's really exciting to know that people are getting value from this program and you also can be part of those people that are taking advantage of these opportunities. As these kind of things are, you know that they will not be available for, for a very long time. It will just mostly be for a period of time. So right now we have, we're recruiting for the October cohort and the next cohort will be in February of 2023. Now, after February of 2023, we, we cannot guarantee that the next cohort will be uh, a tuition-free cohort anymore, right? Because, hey, things will change. And um, so I would recommend or urge you that if you want to take advantage of this. Okay, yes. Yeah, so please, um, I will take questions at the end. Please just hold on. I see that someone has dropped a question already. I will take questions at the end. I will show you all of the science courses that you'll be doing, but I will take questions at the end. If you will just hang with me, I assure you most of your questions will be answered before the end of the session. Um, the program will be delivered using a hybrid model. We will have two weeks of virtual classes. There will be one week of in-person class, and you will also be doing a lot of self-study. Um, as a sample schedule of the program is also on our website. Um, I will send you a link to that as well for you to view what a sample schedule will look like. But moving on to who is eligible for this program, we have three streams. Remember that I said that this program is funded by uh, the government, right? It's funded by the government, by RBC and by Rogers. So for you to be eligible to be part of this program, you have to meet the requirements for either of these three streams. The first one is the RBC Women in Cyber Stream. So you have to self-identify as a woman for you to be eligible for the Women in Cyber Stream. And for the new careers in cyber, you have either lost your full-time employment or you're underemployed, of course, in Canada. And then the third stream is the New Canadians in Cyber Stream. And this is for people who have lived in Canada between two to 10 years. And between that period of time, you haven't been able to find something that aligns with your education and skills. So these are like the um, peculiar requirements to each of these streams. But for you to even qualify, you must either be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident, or a convention refugee. Um, you should be a minimum of 18, and you should have at least a high school diploma, that is it. If you have a bachelor's degree, that is fantastic. But if you do not have a bachelor's, that is also okay. That is also fine. But the most important thing is that you need a high school diploma. And then the final criteria is that you are not enrolled in another academic program. For example, some of us may be taking graduate certificate courses in a, a university or in a college. Um, you will not be able to combine both programs uh, at once. So we recommend that you finish your college program and then you come and apply for this at the time when you know uh, you're not currently enrolled in another academic program. Uh, and um, in order to apply to this program, um, I, judging by the last, um, the last session I've had with um, with pen settlements, I thought it would also be good to include the fact that these are things that can help you in putting together your application. I'm going to talk through the application process now. 
But if you think about, uh, uh, but before we move into the application process, I did mention earlier that you do not need a technical background to be able to apply to this program. However, what we want to see is someone who is curious about technology. We want some, we want a, a candidate who, who is able to analyze complex information because cybersecurity is not uh, a walk in the park. Is it doable? Absolutely. But is it a walk in the park? No, it is not. So um, we're also looking at people who are able to walk in very fast paced environments. We want people who are able to work effectively in team-based setting, and you need to be able to pay a lot of attention to detail. And finally, you should have a high aptitude for learning new technology. Very important, very crucial. So we need you to also be able to demonstrate your interest in cybersecurity. How can you demonstrate interest in cybersecurity? I know for a fact that some of us do not have that technical background. However, if you want to try something new, the least you will do is do a bit of research. Am I correct? In order for you to show that you're interested in something, you, you would at least try to know about it, correct? So that exactly is how, these are ways for you to show your demonstrated interest in cybersecurity by actually doing your research, putting in some work, Find out about cybersecurity, go on the internet, read about cyber. What are people saying about cybersecurity? These are lots of resources that you can watch videos from. You can ask people questions. You can go on LinkedIn, connect to people. But research, research, research. It is important for you to know that you are truly interested in cyber. But what's also important is that are you just interested because people are talking about it? or because people say there's money in cybersecurity, or do you really want to be a cybersecurity professional? These are questions you should ask yourself before you think of applying into this program. And if you look, uh, uh, talking about the application process, it is a four step application process. First things first is you fill in the online application form. And when you're filling out the form, you only need to upload your resume. If you're worried about which one of the streams you qualify for, don't worry about it, just apply. Click on any stream that you think fits your situation of your profile the most. When you apply, what we usually will do is we will check from the back end to see if you truly meet any of the, of the streams. So if, you're, if, you, if we find that you apply to the wrong stream, we will put you in a stream that fits your profile better. So don't worry about it. If you truly want to apply, just go ahead and apply. And then once we receive your application, we validate your eligibility. Then we will send you uh, a link to take an, on, an aptitude assessment. Now this assessment is only an aptitude assessment, nothing more than that. You know, it, it focuses on your problem solving skills, your logic reasoning, your information parsing, that is it. 30 questions, one hour. And there's also a link here that takes you to the sample assessment. I will send you all of these links in an email at the end of today's session. I will send it to uh, Kavi, and I'm certain that he will share all of the links with you so you don't have to worry about getting any of these links. But for those of us who may be a little apprehensive about taking an aptitude assessment, just go on this link. You will find some sample questions there. Feel free to take any of the sample questions. And for the online interview, we're gonna need you to submit a statement of interest. Tell us why are you interested in the program? Why do you think you, we should admit you into this program? Tell us how you think you qualify for this program. What do you wanna get from this program? These are the things we want to see in your statement of interest and in your resume, just make sure that your resume is up to date because you're gonna also upload your resume at this point. Make sure that your resume is up to date. And then afterwards, you will be answering some interview questions. This will not be a live interview. You only need to read out the questions and provide your responses. But these responses will be recorded. And those are the responses that we will then at the back end review. That then makes a complete application. And then afterwards, we're going to also require that you provide us your reference. Anybody who has worked with you can be your reference, just one reference. They don't have to write a letter. 
we just we will provide you a link which you will share with them and they'll just fill out some information about you and that is it so you don't need to to they don't need to write a letter one reference academic or professional that is all that we need and once that is done you have a complete application so this is what the sample program schedule looks like i would also put a link to this in the message so that you can check that on our website as well for the first six weeks you're going to be doing a lot of self-study but it will be guided right so we will have people checking in on you on a weekly basis to see how you're doing uh, wherever you need help, what areas you're struggling with, and then you would take your first certification. Now, this first certification is like the gateway. So if you don't pass this first certification, you will not be able to proceed to the rest of the program. But if you do, then good luck. And I'm certain that a lot of us here are great candidates, so I have nothing to worry about. Now, the second uh, thing is the SEC 401. So for that person who is asking about the science courses, there you have it. You have SEC 401. The first course is the SEC 275, which is your foundations. Uh, you can feel, please, please feel free to go on SANS website and look up all of these courses, see how much each, of, each one of them costs. And that will give you an idea, the value that you're getting from this program. Because sometimes when people say these things, it's, it's harder for you to relate with it. But when you see it by yourself, then it makes more sense. So I'm gonna encourage you, please feel free to look up all of these courses. You're gonna do SEC 275, SEC 401, and SEC 504. So please feel free to check on SAN's website as well. Um, again, we're gonna recommend that you, you spend at least 25 hours of study time every week. So imagine that this is already like a full-time job for you, or maybe a part-time job. Uh, it may be tough for you to obviously combine this with another academic program. That is why we recommend that you are not in another academic program. So moving on, um, after your first certification, you move on to your first boot camp, which is the SEC 401 Security Essentials. Here you'll be learning, uh, of course, after your foundations, you know you have a solid foundation in cyber, then you can start to learn more about you know, cloud computing, uh, uh, incident handling, you can learn more about um, access control and things like that. So then of course you move on to, after your first one week of bootcamp, which is mandatory, then you will continue your self-study, review all that you have learned. Then you will take your practice exams before you do your final certification. Then after that is done, the cycle continues. Another week of bootcamp, uh, this, this uh, again, will be you know, very intensive, accelerated, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., like very, very intensive. You're gonna be learning a lot of things at once, but that's why, again, we say, we need you to be able to absorb complex information because cybersecurity is not a walk in the park. So when this um, bootcamp is done, you continue your self-study, you will review all that you have learned, take your practice exams. Then finally, you do your third certification, which is the GCIH. Now, when this one is done, uh, this, the professional practice week, this is one that is in person, right? We have the, the facilitators will be live in our physical location to take this session. However, we understand that some people may be in different locations. So if coming for the in-person session may cause undue hardship, by all means, we encourage you to stay where you are so that you do not uh, uh, hurt yourself for any reason. However, if you are in a position or a situation where you are able to physically attend the sessions, of course, it's good for you to come and network, meet with your colleagues, meet with the facilitators, network, build your professional network. Very important, very vital. For you to launch a great cybersecurity career, you need a good network. So that you would also be doing. And then after that, you will do lots and lots of career preparation, resume writing, and a whole bunch of things just to be able to help you build your career, help you find a job. We will have at least 30 touch points on helping you build your, your resume, uh, interview, LinkedIn, a whole bunch of career preparation uh, pieces that we'll be doing with you just to ensure that you get a job. And right now, we're already at a 90% success rate. We have people get jobs even before they finish the program. That is our goal. That is what we are committed to. And that is why part of the reasons why we're here to also help you. Uh, again, this is more about the program. What I will do is in my, um, in my email to Kaveh as well, I'm going to put this slide 
for those of you who also want to know more about the program, but feel free to go on SAN's website and you will see very uh, more specific details of each one of the courses that you will be doing. And so um, another very important thing I want us to note is that you will be getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one support. So um, rest assured that you will not just be left alone to, to you know, go through this kind of program by yourself. We understand that it's intensive, it's stressful, it's a sacrifice that you have to make and will be there for you. You are also going to have coaches work with you. These coaches are people who have been part of this program and also want to give back. So they have walked through the same path and they're more than happy to assist you. You also have access to practice two practice exams. Practice exams don't come cheap, but you will be getting yours for free, two sessions, two exams before you take like the main exam. So that helps you prepare for your certification. We also have an amazing student community. Our orientation is top of the range. We ensure that every single aspect of the program is put out to you in very simple form so that you understand and you know what is ahead of you. We promote communication via Slack. We have study groups. So you're not even studying alone. Just on Saturday, we had a graduation for people who started the program in October. And it was so amazing how much people had to say about study groups, how the study groups helped them. It is phenomenal. So all of this support you will be getting. Then apart from this, you would also have access to technical mentors. These are subject matter experts, people who have been in cyber for many years. You have access to these people that are checking in on you on a weekly basis, they're doing tutorial sessions with you just to ensure that not only do you understand what you're learning, but you also know how it applies to real life. And then the career development piece, I already talked about that. It is honestly top of the range. These are, this is, these are the things that you will be getting. This is the level of value that you will get by being part of this program. So when I say that it is a once in a lifetime opportunity, this is what I mean. And so for those of you who would like to also go research more about cybersecurity jobs and building a career in cyber, these are job titles that you can look out for. These are entry level job titles that you can research. But what I also want you to do in your research is that actually you can even go on YouTube, right? Type a day in the life of a cybersecurity professional or a day in the life of a SOC analyst, right? You will hear what people have to say. And what would you do with this information? It helps you understand if you're truly cut out for this or you just want to leave it, you know? And it's okay if you think cyber is not for you, but if you think it is for you, it helps you reinforce what you think you know, right? So I'm just going to encourage you to also do that bit of research. In terms of our graduates and where they work, we have connections with over 70 unique employers over 70, and I mean it when I say that, and these people keep coming back. So rest assured that, you know, with your, with your uh, corporation as well, you will definitely get a job, even if not by before the end, within the first few weeks or even max, maybe three months or something after graduation, you will find a job uh, within the cybersecurity field. And these are interesting stories from our alumni. I could read this to you because again, we heard it from them, but what I will encourage you to also do is go on LinkedIn, try to connect with people who you see have been part of this program and then ask them questions. That way you're able to get first hand information without um, any form of influence from our end. So I'm gonna encourage you to also do that. But this is also one very interesting testimonial that you know uh, it's all thanks to Pan Settlement who uh, connected this amazing individual with the program and um, he's currently in the program. He's, he's um, um, thanking Pan Settlement for, for connecting him with the program and all of that. So I hope that someday soon, some of us in this, uh, in this session today would also be able to share our amazing uh, testimonies with other people on LinkedIn or anywhere else. But what's more important is that do you think that cybersecurity is for you? If you think so, then please feel free to send us an email. Go ahead and apply. All of the links that you need, I will put in the email that I will send to uh, Calvin, which he would onward share with you. But now I'm happy to take as many questions as I possibly can um, very quickly because I also know that a lot of us uh, want to go. 
So for the person who was asking about SANS courses, I believe that that has been answered. And the next question I see here is that, can work permit holders apply for this course? Um, at this time, no, right? We're focused on helping Canadian citizens, permanent residents, and convention refugees. So I, I think that's all for the questions in the chat. Thank you again, everyone. Uh, Kavi, I don't know how you want us to handle those who want to ask their questions, but um, I will wait for that. Okay. So let me check. I only see one hand up. So we have Ethan, and then there are a couple of questions in the chat box. Yeah. I, I Ethan, can go can ahead, hear. open open your mic and ask your question. Okay. Um, hi. And uh, that sounds like a very interesting program. I really appreciate your introduction. Um, uh, you uh, recommended some uh, external uh, resources to check mm -hmm. out and to further, uh, in order to further demonstrate our, um, you know, interest and curiosity in the program. And uh, let's say, for example, I got, uh, I've audited some courses at university and actors controlled methods like radius and tactics plus and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I want to demonstrate, I want to talk about that with you. Uh, just uh, now my question is, uh, in which stage of assessment um, uh, we have more chance um, to talk about things and to interact with a member of your team, yourself or someone else to talk about it? Is it in the assessment, in the, in the, in the interview, in the test or which stage is going to be? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ethan. So um, two, two places where you can actually demonstrate this is, you know, when you take some of these courses, you get like a certificate, or even if you don't get a certificate, right? In your resume, under your education and qualifications, you can go ahead and list all of the courses that you have taken, everything that you think you have done uh, in your knowledge or in your quest for knowledge about cybersecurity. That is number one. Number two is during the online interview, there is also a portion of that uh, 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 interview where you can first of all, put in a statement of interest. So in that statement of interest, you can also demonstrate how much research you have done and let us know how passionate you are about cyber. Then there's also another question in there that asks, uh, that, that requires that you show how much research you have done. So you have different avenues to show uh, how, how much you have. Um... Yes, I see another question. So you have a different avenues to actually demonstrate your interest in cyber. And this is because this is a highly competitive program. So it is important to us that we have people who are truly interested and ready to dedicate uh, their time uh, and you know, efforts towards building a career in cybersecurity. So I hope that answers your question, Ethan. Yeah, awesome, thank you. No worries. I see another question in the chat box. It says, I think I saw there are three weeks of in-person classes. Yeah, so um, it's actually, one week of in-person. So there are three weeks of uh, live sessions, live sessions, right? But the third week, which is a professional practice week, we're gonna have the instructors live here in Brampton. The other two weeks, the instructors are science instructors and they will be in the US. But for the live session, which is the third one, the professional practice week, we will have our instructors live here in Brampton. So like I said, if, Coming over to Brampton will cost you undue hardship. You will be able to join virtually. Because again, this program has been running virtually for so long. Uh, we're trying to bring back the in-person components now because that was the initial plan for the program. And then we started the program and COVID hit and everybody went back home. So we're starting to bring back our in-person component now. And so if coming over at this time will cost you undue hardship, then we will recommend that you join virtually. But if you somehow are around Brampton or Mississauga or, you know, in the GTA and its environs, then by all means, you're free to come in and join the in-person session. There will be people here anyway, whether uh, you're far or near, there will definitely be people coming for the in-person session. So it's just an opportunity for you to network, meet your facilitators, 
and connect with your colleagues as well. So, awesome. Thank you very, thank you so much more. So um, I have also dropped some links here in the chat box, but I will definitely be sharing all of these links with Kave so he will share with everyone who has joined today's session. I don't know if there are any more questions, Kavi, but... Um, no, I don't see any other questions and me, yes. no, and up. okay. So I hope I will get to see applications from you. And please, when you're filling your applications, there's a question that I would ask, how did you hear about the program? Please let us know that you heard about the program from PAN Settlements. PAN is an amazing partner to us and we want to continue to nurture this relationship with parent settlements. Thank you all very much for your time. And thank you very much, Kavi, for having me. No, well, thank you. Thanks for taking your time. It was great info session. I'm sure you're, you're gonna get, you know, lots of applications this year. So, and uh, so if, if there is any other questions or we need more information, I'll, I'll reach out to you and maybe we can set up another info session if you have time. Uh, there's another question. When is the due date for the applications? So for the October cohort, the deadline is August 1st. 1st of August is a deadline. But even if you submit your application on the 1st of August, everyone gets a fair chance at being reviewed. So it doesn't matter when you submit. As long as you submit before the deadline or even by the deadline, then your application will be reviewed. We don't do admission on a rolling basis. So we, we, we wait, well, maybe not wait, but yes, you will get a fair chance of, of being reviewed. In the near future, I believe so. There are a lot of things in the pipeline. I cannot say when, but there are definitely a lot of things in the pipeline. Okay, in the absence of any other questions, thank you very much, Kavi, for having me today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Uh, afternoon and thank you everyone for joining us today thanks everyone bye now thank you have a good day bye